All right, good afternoon, um, and uh, welcome to the National Museum of the American Indian. It's good to see so many of you here on this uh, cold, rainy day in Washington, um, but we really appreciate it. Um, congratulations to our five finalists. Thank you so much for all the work you've already put into it and uh, uh, for, uh, for your commitment to this project as well. Um, yeah. So one of the things uh, that, that has uh, uh, sort of not so much dawned on us, but uh, the realization has uh, deepened over time is the, uh, the gravity of the, the responsibility to develop this memorial. Uh, when we got this assignment from Congress a little more than four years ago, uh, we were happy to have it. Um, probably wouldn't have been the next thing on our agenda, but, uh, but, but we knew even then that it was an important thing to do and it was a responsibility that we embraced. As we uh, moved on, uh, we developed a, uh, uh, or recruited um, a Native American Veteran Advisory Committee. And uh, one of the co-chairs is here this afternoon, uh, Lieutenant Governor Jefferson Keel from the Chickasaw Nation. So with the help of, uh, of this advisory committee, um, we went out on the road uh, to begin talking to Native American veterans all across the country. And uh, uh, with every stop, we were learning something new and important that broadened and deepened our understanding of the nature of the story that this memorial uh, is supposed to tell. Um, not only that, uh, we learned how important it is uh, to these Native American veterans that they will be honored on the National Mall in Washington. Um, it seems past due, frankly, that, uh, that this tradition of service should be honored in this way. Uh, and in some respects, we will never be able to do enough uh, to recognize and honor um, what they have done over these many years. Native Americans have served in every American conflict since the Revolution. Uh, they serve today. I saw uh, on, uh, on my Facebook the other day, I have a nephew that just graduated basic training at Fort Sill. And, uh, uh, and just uh, the latest in a, a very long line of, uh, of uh, young men and women in my family uh, who've chosen to serve. Um, we heard stories uh, that would make you laugh, um, chill you to the bone, make you cry, and uh, literally make you joyous about, uh, about what these men and women have done uh, over these many years. Um, we learned a great deal that we did not know. Um, some of the basic statistics were well known to us, that Native Americans served at a higher rate per capita than any other group. Uh, throughout the 20th century. We knew that Native Americans had served in every war uh, since the Revolution. We knew that both men and women uh, had long traditions of service. Um, we knew that uh, this story of Native American service was not confined to any one tribe or any one part of the country, that literally every community um, across the United States uh, had, had participated uh, in this tradition over time. Uh, we learned about the ways that, uh, that veterans are received back into the community when their service is completed. Uh, we learned about the challenges that many of these veterans uh, continue to face um, due to uh, the, the lack of access to the services they need in far too many cases. Um, but most of all, we learned about their pride and commitment, their pride in what they had done uh, and their commitment to the well-being of the United States. <clears throat> that is uh, uh, no small irony uh, when you think about it, uh, to realize that these men and women served um, well uh, a country that had not kept its commitments to their communities uh, over its history. And these veterans are not unaware of that. They're perfectly aware of it, and yet they chose to serve. And to me, that reflects uh, a very deep kind of patriotism, a belief in the promises of a country that had not kept its promises to them up to that time. 
And uh, um, they're, they're really, I can think of no finer example of, um, of being Americans um, than the way uh, these men and women chose to serve over those years. So all of that is to say that uh, we approach this task with a growing and ever deeper sense of responsibility. And um, we were gratified uh, by the response to, uh, to the uh, competition itself. Uh, we were um, delighted at the quality of, uh, of many of the uh, submissions, and we're really quite proud um, of the, uh, the uh, design concepts that were submitted by these five finalists. So uh, we're grateful uh, for all of that. We're grateful um, for all of the people who have uh, worked with us during this process. So today we're at a, a very important point in the process. We're down to five possible designs. Uh, we're going to hear about them today uh, in more detail, frankly, than, than the jury had. And, uh, and we really look forward uh, to this and to hearing, uh, to hearing from these, these, uh, these artists uh, about what it, what it was that they were thinking when they, when they put together these concepts. Um, every project uh, needs many people to make it happen. And uh, um, I won't go through the entire roster of the people that we've worked with uh, over time. I'm sure some of their names will, will come up uh, through the course of our proceedings. But one of the people that we really needed, it might come as, as a surprise to you, but the National Museum of the American Indian has never run a design competition for a national memorial. And uh, um, fortunately, uh, Betsy Gordon, our project manager, was able to recruit uh, one of the very best design competition managers uh, in the United States. Uh, Don Stastny is a native Oregonian. Uh, he is a practicing architect, urban designer, and master process facilitator. Um, he has managed and directed more than 50 selection processes around the world, including two in DC um, and two extraordinarily important ones, the uh, uh, design competition for the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture, and the design competition for the National World War I Memorial, which is under construction on Pennsylvania Avenue as we speak and scheduled to open in November of this year. Uh, he facilitated the design competitions for the Flight 93 National Memorial in Pennsylvania and the beautiful, poignant memorial in Oklahoma City to those killed in the 1994 terrorist attack there. Uh, Don is the recipient of numerous awards, including the 2006 AIA Northwest and Pacific Regions Medal of Honor and the 2009 AIA Thomas Jefferson Award for Public Architecture. So please welcome our uh, design contest manager, Don Stassen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. That's better. Okay. Um, first of all, this is, uh, let me <clears throat> say, um, I have been involved in many, many of these processes, as, as was uh, mentioned by Kevin. Um, I don't know one that I've run that I'm not more honored to be a part of for the reasons that Kevin stated. And uh, uh, as we put this overall program together, it's not only the charge from the Congress, but it is a charge from the veterans and the tribes uh, and the representatives that have spoken about this and given body to an idea uh, and be, uh, enabled us to kind of create an overall vision for what, what this could be. We are involved in uh, what is called a two-stage design competition. The first stage was an open call for ideas. And these ideas uh, came in anonymously uh, in electronic format. And we received, uh, out of the 400 and some registrants uh, registered for the competition, we received 120 entries. Each of these entries was looked at, um, and it basically had a requirement for the entry to show the memorial idea 
and also show where it might be uh, cited on the grounds of NMAI. And um, uh, then the jury, which we had put together, which included uh, artists and representatives uh, all over the nation, including um, Hawaii and, and uh, Native Alaskans, uh, went through each and every one of these submissions multiple times. And over a um, two-day period of constant evaluation, uh, they came down unanimously to five finalists. And those five finalists, uh, we have the pleasure of having them here at NMAI today, uh, where we are briefing them on uh, how they're going to move into stage two. And we have the honor of them being able to explain and uh, show what their entries were. And you all are privileged to see them uh, for the first time that they've gone public. So it is a special day, I think, for all of us. What will happen after today is that uh, each of these designers, artists, will uh, go off and take their concept and evolve it to a more substantial level. So it's no longer an idea, but it comes, becomes something very real and very implementable. This next stage um, will occur over the next uh, few months. And um, when we end this, and the announcement is made in, uh, we're scheduled for the 4th of July this year of the selected design, that uh, these di designs will be able to move into implementation. So we'll be taking care of a lot of the details, a lot of the technical issues over the next few months for all five. Uh, so that what is presented to the jury uh, in, um, um, in June uh, are five designs, any one of which could be built, any which of, could go towards implementation. Uh, with that, the, the way that we will do this this afternoon is I'll introduce and we'll have each, each one um, limit their presentation to 15 minutes, please. And uh, they, they've been warned that I will become kind of rude if they go over 15 minutes. Uh, and then we will uh, give an opportunity if anybody has any questions for that presenter uh, for the audience to uh, speak and, um, or, or uh, 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 raise those questions with them. Uh, we will go through all five in that, in that order. And then at the end, after closing, if there is media in the, in the audience, uh, the designers will hang around afterwards uh, so that you can interact with them uh, personally. And that goes for other people in the audience as well if you want to talk to any of the uh, competitors at that time. <laughs> 